his eyebrows are high. Yep. Straighter. So I know I can talk to them second. And then literally when I'm talking to him, you just change the pitch and I'll show you an even a more, a better example. So if you think of eyebrows, like speed bumps in a road and data trying to race down your forehead to get into your eye, you can think of it. If there's a speed bump in the middle of the road, I can go only so fast. I have to go over the speed bump. Then I can try and speed back up. But like you, where your eyebrows so close to your eye, that data can race down your forehead and you only have to slow down at the very end. So when we say highbrow or lowbrow humor, highbrow humor is where somebody tells you a joke and you have to like ponder it for a second and then you laugh. And lowbrow humor is jackass or the three stooges where you see it and you instantly laugh. So this is what I, I say. It's part of our everyday language. Go and research highbrow humor and lowbrow humor. That's literally what it means. Wow. Yeah. Cool. So if you see somebody like this, who there's more than a finger width between their eyebrow and their eye, that's considered a high eyebrow. So proceed with caution. So when you're talking to them, you can give them the information, but then like the car example, once they get the information, they need time before they make a decision. So it goes slow from their eyebrow into their eye. So if you see somebody who sees and has an, a high eyebrow, these people need time to make up their mind. The biggest pet peeve is being uh, forced to make a decision. So if you're in a, sale, a selling environment, like I used to be in technology sales, if I force someone to make a fast decision, I may have gotten a sale, but I lost the customer because they're going to have buyer's remorse after the fact. So if you see that on somebody that they've got a high eyebrow, just know, okay, that, that means that they need time to make a decision. So is they it, may not buy today. Is it that they'll not buy today or you need to maybe slow down or present things in a different way for them to understand because it may not come as quick as as you give me something else. So you may need to add in more analogies. You may need to sell, you may need to provide more value or certain things like that in order to increase the likelihood of them making a decision. hundred percent. It's all of those different things. You just know it's not going to be an immediate yes with them. So how much time they need depends on what they're buying. Obviously the larger the purchase, the more time they're going to need or the more information they may need, but they're just going to hate that. If you want, all right, now hurry up, go make a decision. That's what they're going to dislike. Now, on the inverse of that, if you see somebody whose eyebrow is literally sitting on top of their eye, they understand things very fast. They're going to want you to get to the point fast, and they're going to make a decision faster. Now, because they understand things very fast, they have a tendency to interrupt other people. <laughs> As I've interrupted you this entire, this entire podcast, uh, we're, 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 we're doing this. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, but it's my have, podcast. I'm allowed to interrupt. Low brow or eyebrow. Well, it's mine. And nobody wants to be talked to. I'd rather have the conversation. Yeah, so just while I put up the slides, absolutely, yeah. let's talk. But I'll tell you, I used to get really offended when somebody interrupted me because I thought, well, they think they're just better than me. Yet, hmm. But then when I look, I go, they got a low eyebrow. They just get it. And the thing is, you want to help other people get there or understand it. So every time you've asked anything, it's been to try and help other people, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it's one of the things of, I do it too. I have a tendency to interrupt. And I, again, I used to be offended by it. Now I just know that's the way the person's wired. So that's just who they are. And that's what I mean by it's not judgment. It's about understanding people. Based I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop telling people that it's because it's my podcast. I'm allowed to interrupt and just be like, it's because I have low eyebrows. All right. That's what you should absolutely do. You should take it's, a screenshot of this page and be like, it's, it's a low brow. It's a low brow. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, then you just start looking at people differently. So if you see the picture here, high eyebrow, this one, he's making a face. So you can't really pay attention to it. Low brow, kind of high, kind of, this is called a no read because it's right in the middle. Yeah. So you just start looking at people differently. So now that you understand the two heights, what you start looking at is what are the three basic shapes of eyebrows? So there's three basic shapes. There's straight angled and rounded. And it's kind of like we were kids and we played the game, put the right peg in the right hole. When you start looking at people's eyebrows, it tells you how to talk to them. So you either get straight to the point, help them understand what's my angle, or think about the people around them. So as we go into those a little bit more, there we go. So the first one is, did it go right? Yeah. Okay. The first one is a straight eyebrow. So when you see a straight eyebrow, you think get straight to the point, facts, figures, data, and stop talking. The only thing that you need to ask them, because they tend to be the people who've already done their research is what other information can I get? Because they understand things. They want to know, like if you're doing it in a car dealership, 
hey, uh, what are you looking for today? Or do you want to know how many miles per gallons? Do you want to know the interest rate? Are you want the payment information? And just stop talking and let them ask questions because these people want to get straight to the point. Um, <laughs> when I was married, we went to a gym one time and all we wanted to know was, what's the rate? And the guy kept talking, kept talking. We're just like, cool, get it. I know you have a, a script you have to read through. We're ready to sign up today. What's the monthly rate? And he wouldn't get to the point. So we got up and left. Hmm. And so when you start dealing, you can just stop and say, hey, what other information do you need? If you feel like you're losing them, this is where salespeople get it wrong. Sometimes people are like, oh man, I had an hour long meeting. We talked the entire time. Matter of fact, we almost went over into the next meeting. Duration doesn't always equal success when you're talking to somebody. They may have quit paying attention 15 minutes in, but you were on your script and you just kept talking. Wow. Yeah. So that's where you look at the eyebrow. If you realize they've got a straight eyebrow and you've been talking for a while, stop and say, what other, what other information did you want to know and involve them in the process? Well, it's good to know I'm on the same page as Bill Gates and, uh, and Bradley, Bradley, my boy Bradley. Oh, yeah. So yeah. If you've ever talked with Brad, if you don't get straight to the point with Brad fast. Oh, he, he has no patience. Else- he had no patience. He's, he's, <laughs> he's done. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I love Brad. He's one of my mentors. So, um, angled eyebrow, what's their angle, help them understand it so they can help other people talked about. It. I got it here when I became a corporate trainer. So now when you see somebody with angled eyebrows, involve them in the process, right? Help them understand it. So using the three different pitches, when you're talking to, to the different eyebrows, straight eyebrows, get straight to the point, bottom line, what do they need to know? Angled eyebrow is help them understand how they can help their employees, their customers, you name it. Because once you involve them in the process, these are people who will be your be- your biggest advocates. They'll leave you the testimonials. They'll give you referrals because they want to be included in the process. So is it what's your angle or what's their angle in the sense of like, if I'm selling an information, I'm selling a coaching right. program, for example, mm-hmm. and they come in, is it get them to understand my angle of why I started the coaching program? Or is it get no. them to understand the benefit for them? Them first the and the other people second. So for example, let's say you're selling a coaching program, how it's going to make them a better person. So then they can help their employees, their prospects, help them understand what's in it for them. That will help other people. Don't make it all about them. But once you've gone through my coaching course and you understand these things, this is how you can help X. So what's the angle? What's the benefit? Pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. Now to go the opposite of that is the rounded eyebrow. Rounded eyebrow people are the exact reason why you get on a plane. You have to tell people, put on your own mask first and then someone else's because rounded eyebrow people think about everyone around them first and themselves second. So if you ask them or you tell them in a selling environment how the coaching program is going to help them, they won't understand it. You have to talk about how everyone that they coach will understand it, and then you bring it back to them. So that's complete opposite of the angled eyebrow. And I like to use these two people as an example for the people who are watching from home is Elon and Oprah, right? So he could have retired after he sold PayPal and not done anything. But what is he constantly investing in, right? Electric cars helps the environment, not just himself trying to go to Mars, help other people. Even PayPal was set up out of a frustration to help other people with things instead of him just focusing on himself. With Oprah, unless you've done your research, what do you know about Oprah? Not much, but you know who she interviewed and what is she given her audience? Like if I could walk into any room and say, you get a car, you get a car, you get a Hmm. car, and people would know it was Oprah and look at her rounded eyebrows. It's crazy, right? So now you're in a room and you're selling or you're pitching and you have three different people in there that you're pitching to. Yes. You all have different eyebrows or two of the same. Do you then have to, you have to like really craft your message when you look at one and focus on like, here's the angle for you or here's the benefit for you. And like, I know you probably have a bunch of questions that you want to get to. Feel free to interrupt me and answer your question if they have a straight eyebrow. Do you really have to like go that detail and craft your message to each one? you make eye contact with the person you're wanting to talk to at the time. So when I used to do presentations, I was part of a group that any customer over a million dollars, me and two other people got flown out to. And depending on what I was talking about, I would look at the person and sometimes point at them when I'm doing it. Now, where do you start? Start with the highest eyebrow because they're going to need the most amount of time. Then I look around. So when I'm talking about, let's say, um, let's say I'm selling technology to make, uh, let's see, a way for people to contact each other. Let's say I'm selling Zoom, right? 
if I see the high eyebrow, I'm going to start talking about what Zoom is. Then if I see that they have a rounded eyebrow, the people I'm going to talk to is, oh, you know, it's going to help you connect with your loved ones. So you get to see them, you get to talk to them. If I see the angled eyebrows with this tool, you're not even going to have to travel around. You're from the comfort of your own home. You're going to be able to reach out to other people and help them. And because you're not going to lose that commute time, you know, that's more customers that you can help. But again, I'm focusing on them because it's their angle first. But for the straight eyebrow person, I'm going to go, Look, it's cheap. It's this much a month. You can set it up. You can have a maximum of 50 attendees in your Zoom. So imagine all the people you can bring in from that point and you know, go into the specifics of the cost. So when depending on who's in the room, I know which part of the presentation, because I'm going to have all those facts anyway, but I literally look at the person when I'm talking about something that speaks their language. And how do you adapt it for when you're on stage? So <laughs> here's my little trick. I look for rounded eyebrow people when I'm on stage because I know they're there to support me. So when I'm on stage, what I'll do is I, if I get up, look, I still get nervous getting up. So what I do is I look for rounded eyebrow people first because they're the ones with the biggest smiles. And I know that they're here to support other people. And those are my people who are there to support me. Interesting. Yep. I like it. Cool. Yeah. So well, and if you think about it, who would you rather pet a bulldog or a Doberman pincher? So we look for rounded things. Yeah. But so then in your presentation, are you keeping all these things in mind that you also have people in the room who are low eyebrow? You have people in the room who are high eyebrow and you have people in the room who have angled eyebrows. Yes. So when I'm in here, for example, that's why the benefit statements moved up to the top of a presentation. Because if I don't hurry up and get to what's the benefit for them, they're going to quit paying attention. The other thing is if this was me up on a stage, we would have gone through these slides faster because I start pulling people out of the audience. And what I do is I start having the audience do it. So for example, I spoke at Bradley's Closer School Live in Vegas uh, a month ago. Mm -hmm. Once I got through a few of these slides, I said, y'all are enough to be dangerous now. And it was a door knocker. A lot of people who were door knockers or sell solar, right? Roofing solar, knocking on people's doors and said, don't listen for me. I want to show you how fast you learn this. So I started, I said, all right, I'll take five volunteers each side of the stage. You guys come up one-on-one. I'd bring people up and I go, how high are their eyebrows? High eyebrows. What does that mean? Give them time. All right. Next person, low eyebrows. All right. What does that mean? Get to the point fast. Start showing people how fast that it works. And of course the other people I am for the straight eyebrows. All right. And you'll have my QR code at the end. So you can download the cheat sheet and you can sign up for the course if you want to. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we'll use you as a perfect example. Actually, you you accidentally led me into the right slide. Hmm. So now you've seen enough of this. So with her, what type of eyebrows does she have? Round. What does that mean? That means she needs more time. Yep. Now what about the guy here? Low eyebrow like me. Yeah. Quick to the point. Right. Okay. Now what about her? Angled eyebrow. On which side? She's got one of each, right? So on on my left, her right. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then a low one on the other one. Exactly. So that's because we actually are two faced and we have two sides of our face. We have a personal side and we have a professional side. The easiest way to remember is if I ask you, Hey, are you married? That's a personal question and a wedding ring goes on the left hand. So when you're looking at somebody, the left side of their face is their, how they make personal decisions and they're personal. And this is the professional side. So going back to her on her professional side, it's angled. But on her home side, it's straight. And we can be a different person at home as at work. And so that means they just have no patience at home and they need to be like, they're they're, (laughs) they're short at home. And then it's like, I feel like anyone with kids is eventually going to lower their eyebrows. (laughs) Well, that's if you don't pull them out, right? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) But yeah, so when you start looking at people, you start thinking, okay, this is the personal side of their face over here. This is the professional side. Need another way to think about it is if you call it personal. Personal ends an L and you can make the face, right? Uh, or make an L. I don't yep. suggest doing that because people think you're calling them a loser. Yep. So I always say, hey, are you married is a personal question. So this is the personal side. Yep. Um, so then you just start looking at people again. So you were asking before, who would I talk to? Well, I know I need to start with her or her, right? Mm-hmm. Give them more time. He's also going to need a little more time to see how his eyebrows are high. Yep. Straighter. So I yep. know I can talk to them second. And then literally when I'm talking to him, you just change the pitch and I'll show you an even a more, a better example. So I was talking to an RV dealership and they said, families come in all the time. We don't know who to talk to first, the husband or the wife. I said, it doesn't matter about the sex of the person, but with what I taught you guys today, 
who would you start talking with? The wife. Right. And what would you talk to her about? Uh, what, you know, things that are, are, I guess, things that are important to like other people, like what, how she helps yeah. other people. Hey, things like that. Who's, who are you guys going to go visit when you get the RV, right? Who's going to yeah. ride with you? Somebody coming with you on the RV? For him, he's got straight eyebrows. I'm going to get straight to the point. What's the price? Cost. Yeah, price, you name it. So you just talk to the people differently. But for her, let's say that this is real estate. For him, what are you looking for? A 3-3, three, three, a 2-2? Two, two? What's your price range you're looking for? For her, oh, is, are you going to be entertaining at the house? Who are the extra bedrooms for? So you just start just looking at people. Yeah. I actually think anyone who watches this presentation and listens to the podcast should actually go and create like 10 questions that you would probably ask if someone was, if, if you got on a call and you found out they were high eyebrowed. So you actually have questions that you know how to go into, like whatever you're pitching, whatever you're selling, create 10 high eyebrow, rounded eyebrow, like questions, high eyebrow question, 10 rounded eyebrow questions, and like 10, ang- 10 lower, lower eyebrow question, and 10 angled eyebrow questions. 